Since posting my last video on mixing flesh tones for painting portraits, I've had several artists ask why I use so many colors on my palette. You can see here I have about 15 colors that I use every day as I'm working on a painting, uh, specifically on portraits. And a lot of these colors are what I would refer to as convenience colors. In other words, they don't have to, they don't, they're not necessary on my palette in order to paint, but they just save me time from having to mix them every time that I sit down to paint. So what I want to do today is I'm going to show you a very limited palette over here of just four colors plus white and how you can get a, a pretty close or very similar palette to, to what I have over on this side. What I have here are, are basically the three primary colors. I, I have two blues here, um, which I'll explain in just a minute, but first let me just tell you about the colors, the other colors that I have. I have a, a yellow, which is, these are all Winsor Newton colors. This is a Winsor Lemon. This red here is a Permanent Rose. The blue here, the darker blue here, is the French Ultramarine Blue, and this slightly lighter blue here is, is a manganese blue hue. And then I have titanium white at the top here. Now, all you really need are, are, th are the, the three primary colors, yellow, red, and blue, in order to, to mix many of these colors. The reason I have the two blues here is because in order to get uh, some of these colors, specifically the, this, this, these ranges of, of different greens, I need a little more than just one blue, and the, and the ultra, ultramarine blue just isn't quite enough on its own, and, and the manganese blue just isn't quite enough on its own for me to get these. So, so that's why I've incorporated two here. But if you only have one blue, you can, you can get pretty close, but, uh, but this will just get you a little bit closer to some of these greens. Now, a lot of these colors that I have on my palette are cadmium colors. In other words, they contain cadmium, which really gives you these, some of these really bright colors, some of these bright yellows and bright reds and, and the bright green here. I can get pretty close to some of those colors, but I, on, on some of them I can't get quite the brilliance that, I, that you can straight out of the tube, and that's another reason why I use some of the uh, convenience colors. Another factor is that, say with alizarin crimson or, or a lot of times with this sap green, getting the transparency to be the same is, is often difficult, uh, especially on the sap green, which I'll show you in just a, a few minutes. If you tried a different blue, perhaps you could get a, a little different result, but with the blues that I have here, I can get close to this color, but, but as far as the transparency, it's a little more opaque than what I can actually get straight out of the tube. So let's go ahead and, and I'm just going to go ahead and start trying to mix. I'm gonna, I'll start from the, the left here and kind of work my way around. The first color is that raw sienna. So let's see if take a little bit of that, that Windsor lemon and that permanent rose. Mix those two together. Of course, that's two too much on the orange side, so I'll take some of that French ultramarine blue and mix that in there also. It's got a lot of oil in it, you can see as I'm splattering all over the palette here. Take a little more of a that permanent rose. Because I not only want to try to get into the, the correct color family, but I also want to try to, I have to get the, the correct value as well in order to get it to look like that, that same color. Let's get closer. Actually, it's pretty close. It's a little dark, so I'm going to go ahead and add a, just a little bit of yellow in there. That's pretty good for a for a raw sienna. So I'll take that and stick that over here. Now the next color is that gold ochre. I could actually just take a little bit of that that same color that I just mixed and add more yellow to it. Every time that I'm, I'm getting set to, to dip into one of these colors over here, 
I'm cleaning off my my palette knife because I want to try to keep it as clean as I can so that I don't end up getting all these other colors mixed into the those primary colors that I have in order to keep the color as pure as it can. I'll add a little more of that red in there. Just a little bit of blue. Let's go a little bit darker. Gold ochre is a is a color that I use quite often. It's probably one of my most used colors on my palette when painting portraits. So now I've got a raw sienna, gold ochre. Now the next color is this this cadmium yellow, pale. And you can see right here that this this Windsor lemon is too light in value. So what I'll do is I'll just simply add a little more just a little bit of that permanent rose in here. It doesn't take much to to turn it. Um, it's much easier to add your darker colors into your lighter colors on the palette. Because if you do it the opposite way and try to, if I was to take this yellow and try to add it into this permanent rose until it changed color, it would take a lot of a lot of yellow to get it to where I want it to be. That's pretty good. Let me go ahead and clear this off. We'll stick that color back down there. So there's our cadmium yellow pale. Next one is the cadmium yellow, which is just, we can get that the same way, just add a little more of that permanent rose to get it to turn a little more towards the, towards the red side. Okay, the next color is this cadmium orange. And all I'm doing is the same thing that we did in these two, except we're just we're just gradually adding some more of that permanent rose in there to get a to get it to go more towards the orange side. Um, you can see also I have not I have not touched that white yet. I don't even know if I'm if I'm going to tell you the truth, but we'll we'll see. I may have to. It's a little light. Let's add a little more of that red color in there. Now you can see the more I I work on this, it's it's taking a while to get these colors to do what I want them to do. And because of that. That's why I have these other these other colors on my palette is just to save me the time from having to to do this every time that I that I paint. This is always a good exercise though to to challenge your to challenge yourself in judging colors. That's a little still a little dark there. So I'll add a little more yellow. Just a little bit to lighten that up. One thing about color is that you can you can not only lighten the value of a color by using white, but you can also lighten the value of a color with another color. Next one is cadmium scarlet. Now, because that one's a darker a darker value, I started adding more of that yellow into this darker color. When you get into the lighter values, it's it's 
better just to, to gradually add a darker color into it. That's pretty close. Let's add just a little more red. Also, if I was to work this way every single day, just by using these, this palette right here, I would go through a lot of yellow. And let's see, that's pretty good. That's cadmium scarlet is what I'm trying to get there. The next one is cadmium red. I'll just do the same thing. and just add a little more of that red in there compared to the cadmium scarlet that we just mixed. It's pretty close. Actually, go a little bit lighter. I'm really picky when it comes to the value and the temperature of a color because they're so closely related that if you don't have the right value, you're not going to have the right color. That's better. Okay, and then the ne next one is going to be that cadmium cadmium red deep. So let's just take all this that we already have here. Add some more of that permanent rose. That's going to be too dark. That's pretty close. Okay, and then we have the next color, which is alizarin crimson. Now this is where it gets a little interesting. Let me go ahead and clean this palette off real quick. Okay, I've gone ahead and cleaned off my palette a little bit here, and then also added some more yellow and a little more red to, to these colors as well. So when you get to alizarin crimson, it's a little bit different because now... The uh, alizarin crimson is a cool red. It starts to have, it contains more blue in it. So, uh, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of this permanent rose, and I'm going to add a little bit of. Uh, let's let's add some of this French ultramarine. Uh, the reason I was thinking about whether or not to add this manganese blue or the French ultramarine is that I think the the French ultramarine is, is a little more transparent, so it'll kind of mimic that, that alizarin crimson. Add some more blue in there. This is turning to purple. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and try this same thing, but use some manganese blue and see what happens. That's actually a, I like the look of that better. Stick that up there. Okay, now we get into the cadmium green pale. And that's always a fun color. Let's just take some of this Windsor lemon with a little bit of manganese blue doesn't take a lot to change that color. I need a little more though. I 
I'm adding more blue because it needs to be a darker value than what I have. And also, by getting that darker value, by getting that correct value, I'll end up getting the closer to the, the correct color of that cadmium green pale. I don't know, this will probably do it. Just a little bit darker, and we should be there. See how that looks. It's pretty close. So now we've got our cadmium green pale. The next color is the is the tricky one, and that's that sap green. So let me go ahead and clear this off. Okay, to get that sap green, I'm gonna need some yellow. And I'll try it a couple different ways. Let me try the Let's try using some of this French ultramarine blue. A little bit of that permanent rose. The thing about sap green is that it's a it's a warm green, a warmer green, I should say. So finding the right balance when you're trying to mix it on your own is it's kind of tricky. Let's see what that looks like. It's not quite it. Let me try the um, let's try the manganese blue. Let's see if that works different. Actually, let me take a little bit of that permanent rose. Oops, got to stick with manganese blue for a sec. pretty much get a very similar result. So when it comes to, to sap green, it's pretty similar. It's, that's actually a little bit cooler. So the difficulty again is trying to get that, that balance between the warmth of that green and the value of that sap green. And right now, if I go darker than this, it's going to cool it down using the colors that I have. And if I go, if I add more yellow, it's going to it's going to warm it up, but it's also going to make it lighter. So that's probably that's probably as good as I'm going to get. So I guess out of all three, I would I would go with that that first one, which is the French ultramarine blue. Next is Prussian green. So we'll take some of that yellow. Try some manganese blue. We'll try both of those again. We'll do one with the manganese blue and one with the French ultramarine blue.
it's darkening the value, but it's not giving me the green that I'm looking for. Let's try manganese blue. Again, I'm darkening the value here, but it's not giving me it's not giving me that that deep rich this is manganese, that deep rich color that I'm looking for that I can get straight out of the tube. The greens I find are difficult uh, when you're trying to match a green that comes out of a out of the tube, it's pretty difficult. Uh, this is not the 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 value of that, but it's it would be equivalent, I guess, if you added white. To that Prussian green. This is just Prussian green with titanium white. You can get pretty close. It's pretty close, but again, it doesn't give me that deep value, that extra value that I need. So let me go ahead and get rid of that. But that would be about as close as I can get to that Prussian green using these, these colors right here. Okay, the next color is Viridian. Take that manganese blue. Just a little bit of that Windsor lemon. And then I'll add some of that French ultramarine blue into it as well. Viridian is a very cool green. So I have to keep in mind that it's got to be cooler cooler than these greens over here at least. I don't want to make it too blue though. Again I'm going to run into the the problem of the of not getting quite deep enough in value as I can get out of the tube. Let me try one more thing. I mean that's that mimics Viridian but with a little bit of white added into it. Let's see if I can take that French ultramarine blue and that's just manganese blue I just dipped into up there. That manganese blue and just add a little bit of yellow. Let's see if that gets me any closer. Well, it gives me a darker value, but that's more on the blue side. I can I can tell just when I'm when I'm doing this. That's definitely more blue than it is green. So I'll add some more yellow. But the problem is, the more yellow I add, the warmer this is going to get, and it's going to move out of that, start to move out of that Viridian family. That's closer, but. That's a closer, a closer value, but I don't think it's closer in terms of the actual color of Viridian. This, I think, is more of a Viridian, just because it has more, more blue in it, I think. But you can set that one there. You can see the difference in those two. Actually, I'm just going to take that off. I don't like that. Okay, and then, of course, we have our, our manganese blue, which is already here, and our... French Ultramarine, which is already here as well. I've gone ahead and cleaned off the palette, and as you can see, I've gotten all 15 of these colors just by using these colors over here with this limited palette. So you can you can take a smaller palette and expand it, uh, but just since we're here, uh, let's let's see what these actual colors that I mixed using these colors how they how they do in terms of 
if I was to try to mix some, some flesh tones with those. To learn more about the, the colors that I use every day, really, for painting portraits and mixing portraits, you can refer to my, my other video on mixing flesh tones, which might be a help to you if you're interested. One of the great things about working from a limited palette is that you learn a lot about color and how it works. And if you're struggling with color or trying to understand it more, I would definitely recommend working with a very limited palette like the one that I have down here. That's actually how I started out. When I first started painting, I wanted to learn as much as I could about color because I just didn't have a, a grasp on it at all. And the best way that I found was to actually go ahead and work from a limited palette because I only had so many choices that I could make and it forced me to think in terms of color and it forced me to, to really memorize the color wheel and how complementary colors work with each other. And if you're struggling with, with your current palette or with color, I would highly recommend just trying a very limited palette to see what you can come up with. Just mixing a few different grays for the skin. So the more I start to do this, the more that you can see that you can mix flesh tones just by, by getting a limited palette like this and, and, and expanding on that. And then from that, um, I would go ahead and mix my normal, my normal colors together. But that just gives you an idea of what you can do with a, a limited palette. This is that color that I mixed to try to mimic raw sienna. And it's actually pretty pretty close. It's pretty th transparent as well. Let's see what that Prussian green color looks like. That's actually a, um, it's actually a pretty good color for that Prussian green. Prussian green is more of a uh, let's, let's try, is more of a grayish green. So yeah, that works pretty good to use as a grain agent in flesh tones. But anyhow, that should give you a good idea of how you can take a limited palette of a few colors expand it to get, in, my, in this case, 15 colors, and then from those, mix those together in order to get different flesh tones as well, and, and adding white into those also. But that just gives you a, a good idea of, of why I use so many colors on my palette, because it takes so long to mix these colors out, that it's just much easier to put them out on the, on the palette, and then, um, and then go ahead and start painting on the portrait. Anyhow, I hope this helps you out, and I wish you all the best in your art. Take care. <laughs>